So, yeah, let's introduce ourselves. What are our names? Go for it. Uh, I'm Travis. I'm Aiden. I'm Oleg. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet Great. you, Oleg. So, yeah, this uh, is our first episode of the um, Oatmeal podcast. Mm. Let's call it that way. Oatmeal. <laughs> For now. And today we're going to talk about some meals and something more spiritual as well, so that everybody will be able to get the value from this podcast. So, this episode is sponsored by the University of Rhode Island yeah. for providing the education of the high class to the masses of people on this earth and beyond once we go extraterrestrial. Uh, yeah. Out of this world. Thinking big. We do. Excellent. Think big. Think We're big. trying to. So, uh, how is um, isolation life been for you, Oleg? Isolation life is going uh, good. It is definitely a hard time to deal with, but there is nothing we can do in those circumstances. Except we can try to provide some solutions about how to deal with isolations. Okay, so what's going to be tip number one? Number one, I think it's really important to have um, an isolation life routine. If you don't have anywhere to go, but you still have a lot to do, it's really easy to kind of get bogged down and not um, not keep not keep hitting the same uh, benchmarks that you usually do in your daily in your daily life. Exactly. Yeah, I would say it's very important to establish a schedule first of all yeah. for a typical day at isolation. Then you need to follow the schedule. And for that, the most important thing will be to uh, have or develop willpower. What do you think, Travis? Uh, well, I know uh, when this pandemic started, uh, I was stuck at home for, I guess, still stuck at home. Uh, school's at home now, work's at home now. So we're all stuck at home, and uh, I kind of just... Uh, rolled around in my room a lot just sat on my computer all day uh, didn't really do a lot didn't really okay. have any schedule to my life so I was kind of lost for a while there but um I finally decided to like make a schedule now so I'm kind of getting back on track and like having some sort of routine in my life okay yeah that is awesome so yeah looks like we just need to figure out the ways that uh, work for at least a group of people and then this is something that might work for a larger group of population. Yeah, sure. So, yeah, looks like the schedule. So, yeah, guys, if you're listening to this, establish a schedule right now. It doesn't take much effort, and effort is free, as we know. So, make use of the schedule. Then the schedule, so to follow the schedule, the difficult part will be to have the willpower, for example, to wake up at, let's say, 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. or something like that, whatever you might have. So that's the difficult part. But the good thing about that is that it is trainable, the willpower, I think. You just need to do something a little that takes willpower every day, and then you'll be fine. Yeah, sure. Um, Ole, how do you make your schedule? Like, I know uh, it and I both use, we use Google Calendar. Okay, yeah. Um, and we like to block things out by like the hour or by like every 30 minutes. Uh, so what, okay. do, what do you use? You read my mind. I was just gonna- That's a that. good idea. <laughs> I normally just use a to-do list. So I recently bought a very uh, nice uh, notebook. So which is a British one. It's called the uh, Ding Bats. So it looks like this. Wow. There is a tiger. Oh yeah. That's On the cover, nice. for example, That's and 25%. Looking. Uh, from your purchase goes to the Wild uh, Animals Fund uh, somewhere in the UK. Great. So, yeah, it's very nice. So it's a good design of the notebook. It's not that kind of cheap one dollar notebook from the Dollar Tree, for example. Let's just yeah say that, and then it motivates you to write. And then I do my to do list uh, in there, and then I just uh, wake up and then start uh, crossing off the things on the to do list. 
So that works. And then in terms of blocking the time, I think this is a good idea. So, but I didn't use the calendars yet to block out the time. I just uh, set the timer for 50 minutes and then I just do the work during that time. And then I have a 15 minute break or 10 minute break. And I can browse social media, for example, or do some stretching routine. Yeah. Mm. I, uh, I remember you telling us that like last year or something, how, uh, in the library you would do like 45 or 50 minutes and then take like a 10 minute break. And I've yeah, started yeah. doing that too. Like I did that okay. all day yesterday, doing my homework. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's a really good strategy. A viable approach. So yeah, this is something that uh, people can take away as well uh, from that scheduling thing. Okay. So yeah, those are pretty doable things. And uh, yeah, so once you are in isolation, uh, what else should pretty much everybody do? to keep uh, sane, let's put it that way. I think something that I've I've developed is um, getting dressed every day still, like in real clothes, okay. not just in pajamas or sweatpants all day. Yeah, uh, that's yeah, a nice idea. I, I, I mean, the first, the first couple of weeks, I was just in my workout clothes, sweatpants all day, and it, oh, yeah. it, it feels like you're in bed all day, basically. But if you, like, yeah, if yeah. you just put on that's some true. socks, Put on some real pants, you know. It it, it, it kind of changes your your uh, mindset about things, and, and yeah. for me personally, it helps me to like do things productively. Okay, it sounds kind of silly, but it worked. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, I also change into the work clothing, so I just uh, put on the shoes, the pants and then uh, button down shirt or some sort of long sleeve uh, t-shirt, whatever I normally use uh, to uh, go to work at UMN, where I work right now, University of Minnesota. So yeah, that was definitely a good idea. Yeah, even if you are still in your kind of kitchen slash yeah. office area. So yeah, that's a good point. I would also add that uh, if I sit at home all day and then if I have this kind of nice schedule and uh, do a lot of things, uh, sometimes I have this uh, restlessness and then that prevents me from just doing, finishing something. So that's not the best feeling. So, and then it just means to me that I need to go outside and then just be outside for maybe like 15 minutes or one hour. So, and then you kind of breathe some fresh air, you go for a walk and you change the scenery a little bit. So I think it's a very good thing. And then you are back to sanity and then you are more productive. So yeah, that's an incredible thing that works tremendously. Yeah. So just get outside. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we've been doing that. We have a deck over here and I, I just go uh -huh. every year. After every like 50 minutes, I go stand outside for a couple minutes and just uh, get some sunlight, get some fresh air. It really nice. helps. Okay, yeah. That's Vitamin D. Of the deck. Vitamin D. Photosynthesis. Oh yeah, yeah. That that's pretty cool. And then also, yes, if you just uh, turn off your cell phone, so when you go outside, that's going to be another good addition. So you kind of like yeah. let the battery rest. So that's what some battery chemists say. I don't know. I'm not an expert <laughs> in this area, but yeah. And then you get outside for 15 minutes or so one hour, whatever you might have without the cell phone. So just take the key with you mm. and uh, nothing else. So hopefully there'll be no wild beasts outside <laughs> that you need yeah. to call an emergency. Hopefully not. Oh yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of, kind of, I think the universal pieces that, uh, uh everybody can uh, use anything else we want to add. Uh, Isolation life, pretty much just uh, keep moving, stay, stay scheduled, stay organized, and uh, have a structure to life. Even though like our daily structure now is kind of off, you kind of yeah. have to build your own structure, um, and you have to you have to enforce yourself to still do stuff. So that's pretty much it, I'd say. Exactly. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, I think, uh, so yeah, those are uh, very nice and actionable items. 
let's move to another essential thing that uh, is uh, very important at isolation that is uh, breakfast <clears throat> breakfast first meal of the day so the most some important meal this to be the most important one what do you have for, for breakfast oh like is it the same thing every day or is there a variety so yeah that's a big question uh, i think variety will be the key especially when you are in isolation since it's kind of the isolation topic right now so i would guess uh, just kind of like start with uh, two dishes and alternate between them and then i would uh, suggest one of them could be for example uh, oatmeal right so you have your oats some sort of hot hot oats and then you can add frozen berries which are cheap oats are cheap and then you get a healthful meal and also you can add cinnamon to that and honey so maybe some peanut butter and then it's going to be pretty loaded yeah will give you lots of energy for the uh, time whilst you are using those nutrients so yeah that's a good one and then for the uh second meal or the alternative meal you can just uh, have an omelet with a little bit of milk and uh, some soft vegetables such as green leafy salad so kind of cook it up make an omelet it's an easy item to make you can throw in some avocado in there and then yeah you'll be good so it's a meatless breakfast and yet it's very energy dense as well or you can eat them too both of them oats and eggs so for just one breakfast so some people do that for example if you are uh, an uh, athlete for example so yeah that might uh, be a good thing for you but if your day is for example uh, easy then yes you can just use one breakfast what do you think uh, I want I want I want you to go over your breakfast. But I had a question for you. You said it was a meatless breakfast. Do you th do you think there's a benefit to that? Uh yeah, well, uh, I think it makes you feel uh, a little bit uh, lighter probably. Yeah. So if you do not eat meat. So you can uh, eat meat for some meals of the day, but yeah, I heard uh, generally that uh, if you eat meat for all the meals uh, of the day it might not be the most uh, beneficial uh, step to take so yeah because apparently uh, it takes a lot of energy to digest and then from your organism and that's why you might feel tired yeah oh. so that's interesting um, I'll save my thoughts for that my, my breakfast I kind of do like the same thing every day uh, just because it's easy and I think I have a pretty solid uh, variety of meals um, I like to do some eggs every morning and then uh, I learned a trick from one of my roommates uh, we do you toast a bagel and then you put peanut butter on the bagel and then oh, wow. you, you slice up banana on the peanut butter and that's okay. really good yeah um, and then sometimes if I'm really hungry or if I'm trying to like eat a lot more food I, I do a bowl of oatmeal with almond milk. Oh nice. And that's good. Yeah So and then do you kind of um, uh, Put the peanut butter banana system on top of the egg and then kind of jam it between the pieces of bagel. I Have not Both thought about that. Do that Actually, yeah, so I do it separately do. mostly but I'll, ah, I'll try okay. that sometime. It could be done could be done. Yeah. I kind of like the the variety. Like, uh, you got like eggs, and then you got like the crunchy bagel with the soft banana peanut butter. So it's kind of like two different like flavors that you can just go. Oh, like, nice. Alternate, you know, yeah. savory and sweet. Yeah. Well, I guess that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a very good thing to try, Sonny. You have your kind of like fruits uh, for the day and some fats and protein. Yeah. I've been eating a lot of bananas though. Okay. Too many bananas actually. I think we're out. I'm out of I'm bananas, toast. but oh, wow. we've been eating a lot of them. Like every That's day. Awesome. Like two bananas a day. It's really bad actually. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. two bananas is good for you, but I don't we know. are powering through them. 
That's great. So yeah, we have some um, good options. So uh, Aidan, what do you think? So anything else we need to kind of? Yeah, I, I don't. Um, I don't really eat breakfast actually. Okay. I like well, at least not right when I wake up. I like to give my I, I like to give my body twelve hours from the last time I ate something to the next time I ate something. Yeah. So whenever that was, I think last time I ate something was uh, like eleven thirty last night or eleven eleven last night. So I'm gonna wait until twenty minutes from now to eat something. Um, right. But when okay. I do, it's similar to what Travis eats. We all kind of eat a lot of the same stuff, but it's uh it's pretty much the same thing every day, which I find weird for me. I usually don't do that, but um it's it's just four eggs, two pieces of toast, and then I make I make a smoothie that has the same stuff in it usually it's uh, a lot of kale uh berries like blueberries blackberries raspberries and cherries bananas oats almond milk and uh plant-based protein powder okay yeah. wow that's awesome pretty much it. so yeah guys take notes there's mm. some very very important pieces of wisdom being dropped right here so yeah the bottom line is um, if you don't want to think just stick to one thing every day so this is possible and then it's going to be healthy and pretty much uh, straightforward what you need to eat so you can just develop that skill and then it's going to be very easy to make and you don't have to spend money eating out the breakfast outside of your house which is pretty pretty cool and if you want to have some variety, you can produce maybe four alternatives from what you have heard already. So you have a bagel thing, you have this bowl with the berries and seeds and protein powder, and uh, you have an omelette with vegetables or oatmeal with berries. And coffee. And coffee. Yeah, coffee. I drink so, that before I eat every morning. But. That's awesome. Yeah, coffee is a good idea. So I also throw it into the mix. So yeah, I normally alternate actually between kinds of coffee. So I bought the French press for eight bucks from IKEA. IKEA. Yeah, it's wow. a very nice thing. So yeah, apparently it makes better coffee than the drip. It machine. does. Yeah. Yeah, because your coffee is more flavorful due to the oils which are not filtered. Uh, yeah, so. I like the French press. I used that for a long time uh, okay. before I moved. But we have a drip. We have a just a classic drip machine here because because me and Travis drink so much of it. Yeah, a French press doesn't really make sense because we'd be using so many grinds. Yeah, but we make it work. Nice. And we always oh. make sure to buy um, uh, like fair trade or, or uh, equal exchange branded okay. coffee. Uh, it's like, That's it's a good more idea. expensive, but it's better for you and better for people. And how expensive it. how expensive per pound are they uh like for example the one i just bought i think it was the kicking horse brand it's like the regular oh yeah yeah that's bag. a canadian stuff i bought it once it's yeah like okay 10 bucks which is a lot but that's that's not bad so i think i bought it yeah. for about like 12 from stop yeah. and shop yeah in the state of rhode island so, so yeah but it was compared to like the house yeah. brand like folgers or like maxwell house you get the big tin for like uh eight dollars it's way uh, expensive, okay. but it's definitely worth it. I think. I think yeah. it's a worthwhile investment. I just uh, buy beans because I find them more flavorful. So yeah. They produce more flavorful beverage, and yes, you can buy beans uh, for if it is uh, like uh, loose loose beans, then it could be they could be as cheap as like about eight ninety nine a pound, which is not bad. Not bad at all. Pretty good. Do you have okay, a manual with... grinder? Uh, yes, I have. No, I have just a, a mechanical grinder with oh, a blade cool. that spins and grinds everything. So it was also a cheap thing. I got it from, uh, I think, was it Marshalls or something? Mm. So yeah, and then just uh, set me back maybe $15 or something, but it's a very nice thing to have. And then you have a French press, which is about like $8 or so, maybe 10 from the grocery store. Yeah. So it's a little more expensive. And you're all set, so it will pay back very fast. You don't have to buy those 
coffees from Dunkin Donuts. Oh yeah, no. For example, no or other companies. Let's just say that. Yeah. Night, Starbucks and whatever you have, because their coffee costs like about two bucks uh, on average. Yeah, you one cup, you know. You can just black coffee. Nothing added to that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That, that then, that's a treat to me. Going to going like a local coffee shop once every two weeks. Okay. Yeah, that's a treat. Yeah. So. That's uh, great. Cool. And uh, yeah, so yeah, basically it's possible to have a healthful breakfast, have a variety of them at home, and it's going to be also very affordable, even if you buy some sort of fancy ground coffee beans or whole beans, yeah, whatever yeah. you might prefer. So, um, Oleg, earlier you mentioned you put uh, like frozen fruit in your oatmeal, I think. Is, you oh, yeah. That? Yeah. Have yeah, you that's... have you had any trouble finding um, frozen fruit in the stores during this pandemic? Frozen fruits in the stores right now are still present. Really? So yeah, I went to the store I think uh, a week ago. Yeah, last week, and I was able to buy some frozen uh, berries such as strawberries and uh, blueberries, uh, so and cherries. Wow. So yeah, that was that was fine. Yeah. So the shelves were kind of like diminishing a little bit. Uh, they were being decimated at that point. Uh, but yeah, it looks like they kind of like replenish the supplies. At least uh, here in the Midwest, I think there is kind of more food and less people density than in the roadie. Yeah. Uh... When, okay. when we go to the stores, it's like the frozen fruit section is pretty much empty most of the time. Uh, so we're we're uh, running low on frozen fruit out here. Ah, uh, okay, I see him. Yeah, well, it must be just kind of the uh, what's it called, the coastal, coastal, coastal cities. Yeah, thing. I yeah, think the density, areas. population yeah. density. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's all about the density at this point. So we also ran out of the toilet paper, but yeah, food-wise, so that's what we're kind of like speaking about right now. It's still good, still going strong. And also another tip I can uh, share is that uh, actually uh, good and expensive like organic breads now move to the frozen section. Yeah. So yeah, because people don't want to buy them, I think. And then you can find some sort of maybe even cheaper organic bread is just in the frozen section. I yeah. bought this Dave's Killer Bread, which I like a lot. Oh yeah. So and I found it in the frozen section this week, for example, instead of the normal shelves at room temperature. So and then it was slightly cheaper. Maybe I saved like two bucks actually on this. Wow. So I got like four instead of six. Yeah. So. And then it's great. So it's organic bread. It's totally worth it. So please invest in good food and then your health. So. Yeah, it's much better than one dollar bread. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've been, I know, I know, I've been finding a lot of the plant-based stuff I eat has been on sale because no one's buying it at the store. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you get really good deals on that, like that, that you normally wouldn't, which is great. Exactly. So yeah, just peruse the natural food, organic section food, and then you might find some very good deals, especially right now so yeah because the stores want to get rid of those yeah supplies and uh yeah they will probably try to incentivize that uh readings uh somehow via maybe low prices and other deals so yeah check that out that's another tip right here cool awesome sweet so um okay moving on here we have uh what what sort of exercises have you been doing while you're stuck inside isolated keep yourself active oh uh, yeah that's a good thing so uh yeah basically so that's a lot of body weight exercises i would strongly recommend to check out uh, wim hof's uh, techniques of breathing what was that uh wim hof oh went off so yeah that's the dutch guy right who uh, kind of developed a very nice uh, breathing technique that helps you become more helpful uh, maybe you can combat the stress 
and anxiety with this and the other kind of more serious diseases even such as uh, cancer uh, here really? so then you can deal with cold temperatures more easily so so yeah. is that just by breathing um, yeah like special breathing by uh, focused uh, breathing so you need to take several breaths in they're very deep and then you need to kind of uh, exhale um, out but not so uh, much so into basically focus mostly on the inhaling which is the saturation uh, of your organism with the uh, oxygen so yeah that's what you do and then when you exhale you get rid of like uh, co2 that is formed but yeah you need to kind of like make very focused uh, inhalation i think so it focuses on the inhalation and the yeah. saturation of your hemoglobins with oxygen yeah i think that is uh, the goal cool so yeah and then you are gonna feel very good and then it's helpful for example when you want to get rid of a uh, hangover for instance mm, interesting so yeah that's one of the practical application huh so yeah uh, I have been doing that, uh, or kind of like the uh, Russian version uh, of this. It's called the breathing uh, gymnastics, literally, if you translate it, or breathing exercises. They are more focused on uh, rapid breathing, and you breathe in eights, so to speak. You do like eight by four sets of breaths. You mostly concentrate on breathing in, and you don't think about breathing out. So, and then that's why breaths are more rapid. So it provides kind of like saturation, a like quick saturation with oxygen, I think. So, but here you gotta pay attention to the numbers. So not the length of the inhalation. Okay. As opposed to Wim Hof's method. So, but I think they will nicely complement each other. So yeah, you have like two techniques and then it's what's yeah. better than one. It's two. <laughs> awesome. That's cool yeah um we we've just been uh for exercising i ha i haven't done any of that breathing stuff but um i guess we we have been we've been doing a lot of running uh, okay. we've been running like 5ks oh nice around the just do a loop around the neighborhood and, yeah uh, i've noticed my breathing is really important during the running so maybe that'll help yeah for sure for sure maybe that'll help us like understand how our breathing works and help us run better exactly so and then you don't have to go to the gym to do that and you can just do that outside yeah yeah it's a, it's a good opportunity to get some outside air and we we're we're fortunate enough to live in such a beautiful area we have our our 5k run route goes right by the ocean you know these beautiful houses and stuff exactly. and it has great scenery so yeah i remember the area that's that's a, that's a nice one yeah it's good but it's a tough run but we're getting better at it so okay yeah we had to take a break unfortunately though because all of our um all of our legs and bones weren't used to all that oh wow on our yeah joints. and it's just our our heels hurt our knees hurt our shins hurt especially our, some of our other friends who are newer to running they got se severe shin splints <laughs> So we, oh, had wow. take, we had to take a little break, but hopefully we're, we can get back into it maybe as soon as next week. I'm ready. We're taking like a, like a week and a half off, I'd say, but yeah. I'm, I'm ready to go back because it feels great. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's pretty intense. So yeah, and then yeah, if the running is very difficult, so yeah, I hear that what you can do, you can, for example, uh, set a 20 minutes, for example, for your run, right? And then you can run for one minute and then walk for one minute and then run for one, walk, walk for one so that works for even some uh, severe cases for example when you're out of shape or hurt things like that so yeah and then uh, the thing about this is that you just do not uh, you must not be uh, desperate and you just need to keep going and eventually at some point down the line you'll become better at this absolutely so, yeah and then this principle works uh, in many other cases such as uh, martial arts <laughs> for instance which many people do i know <laughs> and sports and uh, also science so you just need to kind of or music whatever you might have just set out even if it's gonna be like 20 minutes a day so 
and then you do this every day pretty much or maybe every other day let's say so but at least two times a week and then you already develop this uh, skill mm. if you do something once a week so it's not the most optimal way but if you want the skill to retain that i hear you need to do this at least twice a week even if it is 20 minutes it's still fine but apparently 20 minutes a day you can easily spend on social media but instead just do some exercise yeah, yeah. Yeah. with the body weight we already have two options running outdoors or breathing exercises indoors yeah i mean there's more indoors too right yeah. i mean if if someone's in an area where they're not allowed to go outside for example i mean you can True. do you can do at least crunches everywhere sit-ups yes. and crunches i know everyone needs more core work whoever says whoever says they don't is lying so that's that's something you can do everywhere i mean there's there's the staples you know crunches sit-ups push-ups squats uh body weight squats get kind of rough after a while i don't think i don't think they're that great but uh, okay if I, people, I think people can make their own resistance though in terms of weights um yeah you know you can make weights out of anything you can make weights out of bags of groceries you can use all your bags of frozen fruit as weights uh, yeah, you, you yeah. can get creative with it too uh also i know resistance bands are pretty cheap on amazon and at least they're still delivering so or maybe oh, if you nice. make your way to a walmart i know we have a we have a resistance band here that i've been using for a lot of shoulder recovery stuff yeah but exactly. you can use those things for a crazy amount the other day me and travis were messing around with it trying to see what we could do okay get a pretty good pump on if you're doing if you do it right so yeah, oh, yeah, yeah that's i recommend cool. yeah, that highly the resistance band as well so it helps a lot so you can do many targeted muscle exercises with resistance bands as well and then they work for some martial arts specific solo training too you can imitate throws for example or Exactly. takedowns so they are both good for judo and wrestling style exercises i also um purchased a um kettlebell so before yeah. the, right before the crisis so and then i just work out with the kettlebell every other day it's pretty hefty but yeah so i'm getting in there so yeah and there is a free video available so on the onit website so it provides you with like about eight exercises with the kettlebell so mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome and then those exercises target specific muscle groups so that's just great so you have your gym basically so exactly yeah on it's great yeah on it's great as long as you have the kettlebell so yeah just kind of like invest into that that might take some maybe i think it's something like about like 100 dollars or something maybe 150 with the delivery and stuff so but yeah it's gonna be good it's a good design so it makes you kind of want to grab it and exercise with yeah. that i'm sure so, yeah. yeah yoga mat is important as well to do crunches just like aiden was saying yeah i i think the the hardest part uh is starting you know yeah because like most people uh we used to rely on the gym mostly like we had a routine where we would go to the gym and that's where we would do all of our exercises six days a week yeah six days exactly. of life that was our routine like we had a cycle going but um now that we're stuck here it's it's tough to to kick ourselves into like workout mode when we're still at home you know because like yeah. uh going to the gym was kind of like that's our start point and now we have to make our own start point. We have to we have to get ourselves to start switching over from relaxed to workout mode. So I think that's a tough part for people during this time. That's like an obstacle we all have to overcome. Um, something that that I thought about with that was yeah the 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 the, the challenge I find here is 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 related to that because at the gym you know there's all this weight. And to me, I see that as a challenge and an obstacle and an achievement to get to. Like, I mean, like you can start off, you know, lifting this much weight, but there's so much more weight available in that space to eventually have the strength to lift. But at home, I mean, yeah, maybe you have like 25 pound dumbbells and it's like, God, what am I supposed to do with this? But I think, I think you, 
I, th- I think you gotta think of it in a different in a different form. Like, like, not, like, don't think of the amount of weight you're pressing as an achievement, but try to try to challenge your your body and your muscles and in, in your mind in different ways. Say, so, okay, so in, in, instead of saying what's the uh, how how heavy can I lift is how how much can I lift quantity wise, and like just just change your achievement to match your environment and your resources, and I think that helps a lot. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah, definitely this situation is a challenge. So you can consider this as one. So when you stay at isolation and uh, yeah, so just uh, set yourself to overcoming this uh, challenge. And then you can say to yourself, for example, if I for example, do maybe uh, 10 push-ups in the morning, 10 push-ups in the evening, every day or something like that. So yeah, that's going to be like one uh, step in overcoming this grand challenge. So, and then you'll get your exercise in and then you'll be just fine. You will not lose uh, anything. So many people think about how they will become fat or thin, whatever when the gyms are closed, but if you think about people from the 1950s, for example, they were still able to be in a good shape, even if they only ran and uh, did uh, push-ups and squats and probably some sort of uh, sit-ups. It would be ideal to find a pull-up bar somewhere and do the pull-ups. Those are nice challenge because all the kind of playgrounds uh, outside are closed so but you can perhaps find a tree to two pull-ups on or some people use the ledge in their houses on which they kind of ledge and do the pull-ups you can also find a scaffold which is safe enough to hang on if you go to some construction area Uh, it also works or maybe a fence is another option or a rock not full of plus but just lifting yeah exactly just live in a coastal area yeah yeah that is true so yeah to find something to do pull-ups on that's kind of like the biggest uh, difficulty i think these days so yeah but there are options you just need to kind of look around and then see on what you can hang outside and then yeah so it's going to be kind of peculiar to your area but yeah that way you will be able to do all those kind of uh, pushing with the kettlebell exercises for example and pulling with your body weight and push-ups and running and then it's going to be a very holistic workout yeah i think we have hit lots of uh, good points right there which are going to be very doable in almost any environment. Yeah. Um, so those are those are some really good ways for uh, people to stay active and um, stay in control of their life during the uh, this this uh, new this new sort of age that we're in this new pandemic sort of time. So these are some really good tips. Uh, we got. We got um, routine tips, we have uh, healthy breakfast tips and exercise tips. So those are, I'd say that's pretty good for everyone, you know? Awesome, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully people watching can uh, learn something from this. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, very achievable. So that's uh, something that uh, virtually anybody can do. They just need to get started and all kinds of magical things will happen to effectuate this uh, starting yeah. palette to further stages for sure yeah well okay. i think that's good for us here um any other last points i would say take notes relearn i mean uh, re-listen re-watch this podcast episode yeah and uh, become better definitely and you will become better if you just start starting is the hardest part yeah yeah for sure. you have all the tools all the tips 
but yeah, just go over the starting point and then right under the starting point, things will become much easier Absolutely. than they were before. So that's for sure. So that's the most difficult part, just started, but it's going to be short as well. So it's a very rapid, rapid step. Yeah. <clears throat> Awesome. All right. Well, awesome. This has been excellent. great. This has been great. All right. Yeah. Um, so, and we are out. So yeah. once again, friends, this podcast was sponsored in mind by the University of Rhode Island. Yeah. The flagship university. Loosely. I mean, yeah. Rhode Island. Right <laughs> yeah. That provides great education, great opportunities and inspiration, as well as community and development opportunities for all the students join uri and then you will be the happiest in your life all right all right and yeah. thanks for listening everyone out.